everyone. Welcome to the latest edition of the Colpack and Izzo podcast, brought to you by Gate City Bank with Jeff Colpack. I'm Dom Izzo. We have crossed the threshold into February, so we were in the home stretch of the college basketball season with the madness in Sioux Falls just over a month away. And madness may be the best way to describe the middle part of the Summit League standings right now because it is clear on each side, the men's and women's, that there is one definitive team. But after that, it gets messy. But let's start first with the women, because we're taping this on Friday morning. The Bison women with a big win. I asked, and I'll ask you this, if it's a statement win uh, that North Dakota State knocked off South Dakota in overtime last night to sweep the season series from USD, something that hasn't been done in 23 years so, Jeff Kolpak, is it a statement win for Jory Collins' team last night? Absolutely, and I looked to this statistic, and I didn't realize this until after the game, but I think maybe you pointed it out. It's the first time NDSU has swept South Dakota in women's basketball in the regular season series since 1999-2000 yeah. season. Yeah. I know there's several years they didn't play because of the Division One transition. Right. I get that. However, the fact that, um, that they pulled this off... Um, is is a big statement, don't you? I mean, I think it's a huge. I think it's. A I know big South deal. Dakota's. They're hurt. The Coyotes are not the same team. They are not the team that went to the Sweet Sixteen. They're still good. They're still going to go into Sioux Falls and beat somebody. Maybe a couple of teams. They could mm-hmm. beat the Bison. Right. They easily could have won both of these games against NDSU. But this is a when I talked about this on Hot Mike, and you've covered this just as much as I have of Division One women's basketball. There has been some ugly, ugly teams Oof. and losses. Um, there haven't been this many like red letter wins. Th- this is like one of their top five Division One wins that they had that they got last night. I well, really believe that. Yeah, they they beat the Gophers a couple times, and and you got to throw that up there. Yep, even though those bad are both the there. Gophers, but with South Dakota, but, what else are you going to put up there though? <laughs> yeah, I know. And well, they beat South Dakota State once, right? I once think. it was 2015. But I I look at the manner of how they did it, and to me that was more important than just winning. In that they had the game one in regulation and yeah. let it slip away. And I think NDSU teams of past, and Jory pointed this out after the game, would have just folded, curled up in the fetal position and gone away. But these kids found a resolve and a toughness and came back yep. and, and won it in overtime. And not only that, won it down the stretch yep. in overtime. And that to me shows a certain grit and t- determination. Some moxie, I, I, some moxie I, there. I know. Yep. Yeah, I'm not sure. I hate using those words because they're. You know they're so often overused, but there was a determination there that I haven't seen toughness. It was toughness. I haven't, haven't had that. I haven't yeah. seen toughness in this yeah. team forever, no. ever. No, nope. probably since the Lisa Bue days. That was early Division One. You know that's that's the, that, now we're talking <laughs> to Dater. That's 13, 14 years ago. Katie Lorenz, know? those yeah. those teams. That's yeah, fifteen years ago, sixteen years ago they played. So yeah. that's a long time ago. That's why, again, I put it right up there as one of their best Division One wins they've had. And now they, they have second place all to themselves for the moment because obviously they have the Jackrabbits coming on Saturday. Oral Roberts right behind them. Then you And now they've got the tiebreaker, Jeff, on USD. That's huge coming down the stretch because they swept them here. And again, just like the Bison men, you want to get the second or third seed. Absolutely, It gives you a better path. If you can just get to that title game, you, you never know. Right. If you can get to that Tuesday afternoon title game, you never know what can happen when it comes down to one and gone. I mean, just that, just if they were to even do that, that would be a huge deal in its own right. For them to get to Tuesday, that would be a monumental step it forward. It would be monumental. And, but again, you go to Tuesday and we've seen it where sometimes the favorite shoots 28%. Yep. You can't throw the ball in the ocean, yep. the pressure gets to you. And and, and 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 strange things happen this in, in March. That's why, obviously, they call it March Madness. But if you can get the two or three seed, huge. You did a story on L Evans about yeah. her recruiting process and coming up to Fargo and what she has meant, which is a complete game changer for this program. They have not had this athlete, not in Division One. I've not seen it. Oh, absolutely not. And, and I was really curious because you look at her high school stats, she averaged 9.7 yeah. points a game and is uh, three points better as a true freshman. It's very odd that a true freshman college kid will average more yeah, than, than she did school. in high school. Absolutely right. So I had to like go, okay, what's going on here? And when you look into it, she had a couple teammates who are Division One players, one who had the ball all the time, girl at Northern Michigan, I forgot her name now, but or 
at a Central, Central Michigan. Michigan. Yep. And um, so, okay, that's one reason. Two, she's just you know she, she goes. I had a growth spurt, and she looks so young. Yeah. You know, I think she's still got. She's still growing. You know, she's still growing up, and she looks scary. like she's fifteen. <laughs> you know, and it is scary talent wise. Now, here's the deal. I mean, can we look ahead here? It's Go transfer it. portal. Time. Yeah. Can they hold on to it, her? It, it's it's reality, Jeff. It's I mean it. it I, I don't think there's any. I already saw it, and your story got posted on our the Inform Facebook page. There were two comments at it. Well, how long will they have her for? So fans aren't oblivious to this. No. You know what I mean? And that's that's the reality of where we're at now. And I was talking to Amy Ruley yesterday before you guys went on the air, and I brought that up, and I go, "Is this so bad?" I mean, whatever happened to a player staying at a school for four years and creating your legacy for the rest of your life? Because yeah. if you go to a school for a year or two, then you transfer for a year or two, you really don't have a legacy anywhere. I went to there for two years, and I ended up there for two years and went here for a year. Yeah. When it's all said and done, where's your legacy? I mean, she has a chance here to be an all-time great player in NDSU history. It's, it's trending in that direction already. Yes, yep. there's no yep. question about it. Yep. I mean, five block shots yesterday. Four yeah. credited, and yep. the other one was a bad Should have call. been one, yeah. But she has a chance to stay here and really cement her her, her legendary. She could be a legendary status at this rate mm. because you can be in a top five. I mean, you look at the top five, ten players in NDSU women's basketball history, all legendary status. Let's call it like it yep. is. And so she has that opportunity. But if you stay, if you go here for a year or two, and then you say you go to a Kansas State or something or whatever. And then you start for maybe a year or two. Yeah. When it's all said and done, what have you actually done? Yeah, that's, that's you, you maybe at a Big Twelve experience. I, I appreciate your question. I there. I think it's all all to, in the but eyes kids of the don't beholder. Think, they don't think like no, that. No, it's all in the eyes of the beholder on that too. I think, and I think it's also, frankly, I think it's really different in the women's game than it is the men's game. I'm not saying the transfers don't happen in women's basketball. They do. It's just not as rampant, and I think it's for different reasons. Like, well, I just didn't like the situation. Maybe I didn't like my teammates. Not I mean, necessarily I want to, to go better, play at a higher better level. better yourself right. for the WNBA I, draft? I don't, I've not seen that as much. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I think the circumstances of why women basketball players transfer is way different than the men. S play, playing time certainly is the, the one equal deal. I'm not playing enough. I'm not getting the ball enough. I think that's unequivocal. Doesn't matter what sex you are. I think though the circumstances for the why the women transfer port, and this is something to probably dive into in the offseason, is different than the men. Your point is well taken though, but she's the best freshman in the summit. Oh, there she's got that locked up no lock, question. stock, and barrel there. There's I mean, we've seen almost everybody so far on the women's side and yeah, that's that's a that was a runaway after the Minnesota game. I thought when she was really good that night, she has saved her best for their toughest games: the Minnesota game, mm -hmm. the UND game, USD, and that leads to tomorrow. Because I mentioned this in my commentary, the White Whale is South Dakota State, and the Jacks are winning conference games, Jeff, by an average of twenty three points. Twenty three. Yeah, they're I boat racing here. I think the next step in her game is to get better at driving to the hoop. Mm -hmm. And I think that'll come with strength and just uh, general natural development in the college game. Because she could shoot the three, and, and they know it. So now they're going to yeah. be out on her, and now she's got to figure out that first step to get around somebody. Then she'll be really highly dangerous. Okay, so let me ask you this, because we can talk about it. What is reasonable to expect out of this game tomorrow with the Jacks? Uh, if you can keep it in single digits, just make it a game. I think if you make it a game, yeah. you put some little thought in South Dakota State's mind that you know this team was tough to deal with a little bit, and when you get to March, take your chance there. Yeah, yeah take your shot there. Yeah. But if you can, if you can make it a game, I think that's yeah. uh, that would be a, a almost a. I, I know they're not. Nobody's into moral victories. Correct. Yep. But I, I sort of am at covering this team. I mean, <laughs> you have to be. Yeah. You have to be. I think SDSU won the first game by thirty. So I mean, they went. It was the same old, same old down in Brookings, and I think you're right on that. You have a game with the at the five minute mark of the fourth quarter. That's a that's a victory unto itself because nobody has done that to the Jacks this year. Nobody. They beat USD by fifty nine, <laughs> by fifty nine. <laughs> that's just and crazy. I mean, you just you just take your like, oh my god, and they they got to UN, UND and not lost. What is Aaron game, Johnston right? still doing in Brookings? 
Yeah, we've asked that question, I think, yearly here over the past. I mean, he loves it. And look what he's well, built. Well, it's obvious, but I just... I mean, look what he's built, though. I mean, they are just... They continue to rebuild or reload. There's no rebuilding. They're just like, here's our next wave of players. Maybe it's to your point that the fact that A.J. Stone Brookings in the women's game tells you that maybe transferring to another school right. isn't the biggest and deal I, as the I, men's game. Remember, he was what a... It was Green Bay, right? And he took he the was, job. Yeah, I mean, he was there and then decided, no, nah, I'm going to go... I, I think you made the right call there on how things have panned out. I think so. he loves the Taco Johns and Burgers, <laughs> like I do. I th- you know what? He loves to win, and they just yeah. dominate. And that's that's the the challenge I know that Jory Collins has talked about is how do we get how do we get there? And a step is what you talked about: make it competitive with SDSU, and then keep adding players. I don't know how you find more L Evans, but you got to find that because how many times have we done this show or others say boy SDSU is tougher SDSU is better athletes in the Bison and it wasn't even close I don't I don't know where the gap is we'll find the out bison tomorrow are physically getting closer yeah. physically I don't know we'll find out about tougher right because yeah. that's that's something SDSU has in spades every yeah. single time meanwhile on the men's side the Bison men lost in Vermillion last night Damari Wheeler Thomas their starting freshman point guard got injured left after two minutes with what's being called a hip injury. Uh, they got behind by as many as 17. They rallied to to get within five, and, and USD ended up winning that game. And now, Jeff, you're in the real precarious spot where you go to Brookings on Saturday. Yeah, not good. Not good. In fact, you don't have a point guard. No. Is is, is a problem, especially on the road. Yeah. Uh, you need a point guard. I, I know you always need a point guard, but especially on the road. You <laughs> need somebody to handle the ball. The other crowd is, is going a little bananas. You need somebody to, to, no. to, to run things. You need a great point guard. You need a Vinny Shahid. You need a Lawrence Alexander, a Ben Woodside. You need those type of guys to run your team, yep. and they just don't have that right now. And they're going to need it in Frost Arena. I mean, that's yeah. going to be rocking tomorrow, especially the Jacks are getting healthy. Charlie Easley is back, and they edged out. They won in Kansas City on Monday. They got the game. They blew out UND last night. They are trending in this direction, I don't know. Again, Oral Roberts is by far the best team. Oral Roberts beat SDSU by forty earlier this season. And what so. are the, what what is the theme here? Everybody who's good has a great great point yep. guard. Those Bison teams that made the NCAA tournament, you don't do it without somebody nope. out front. You, you, you can't do it. That's why Oral Roberts has been amazing because Max Aismas is their right. guy that that runs the show for them. I'll just point this out real quick in the Summit League on the men's side. Western had won five in a row heading into last night. They go to Denver and they lose by thirty. So I I don't know what 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 is that going to make? I, I, I don't know what to what, tell what's you. What's going to happen in Super yeah, Bowls? I, don't know what to I, tell you. I mean, we know Oral Roberts is going to be there. I have no idea who they're going to play. I really, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in the championship game, I it could be a host of teams that could make a run down there. Really Does eleven like, and seven get you second or third? Eleven and seven. That's well. SDSU is eight and four right now. Maybe. I mean. Certainly six losses. You're in the yeah. You're in the in top the, three seeds. Yeah. I would imagine there. I mean, the Bison right now are six and five, and they still have to go to Oral Roberts and Kansas City beyond the trip to Brookings. If this were FCS football, <laughs> the Summit would be one bid league. Ding. Oh you know, yeah, there's no doubt, yeah. and that's exactly what it is in reality in the NCAA. I know in basketball, that, but if this were football, yeah. it still would be one bid. Yeah, with the amount of losses that are racking up. Yeah, well, the Missouri Valley found that out uh, firsthand. Uh, this past fall with only three teams getting in, despite the Youngstown still. But I digress. Um, seems like it's been a pretty good week for Cody Mauk down in Mobile. I was visiting with his dad uh, earlier today on Hot Mike that uh, he's taken snaps all over, Jeff. He never played center in high school nor college, and yet he's snapping for the NFL scouts. That's that, he's, he's an athlete. That's got to show you something, though. If you're an NFL guy, say, wait a minute, this guy is willing to do this, then... We got to take a, but take he, a look he at did that. He did that at NDSU in warmups. Right. So it's not yep. like the first time he's ever snapped no. in his life. So they, I mean, he has dabbled in it a little bit, but he's an athlete. He's he's a great athlete. You look at his film, and when he buried that guy from Army, he just pancaked yeah. him on one on one. And I don't know how good this Army guy was in right. college and is right now, but that was had to have been eye popping to the scouts. You just don't pancake no. on one on ones. You know, the Carson Wentz phenomenon when we we covered that leading from the draft from the senior bowl to the combine to the draft was that a phenomenon? I 
I think Cody's one can be, I don't know if as big, but in the conversation because of where he's from and the attention that when we get to the draft, I think it's going to be crazy around right here. Question for you. If he gets invited to the draft, does he go? Oh, yes. If he if he gets invited, it's plus it's in Kansas City, so it's not that far away. I think absolutely. Well, who's going to be at the Hankinson Community <laughs> Center? They'll still have a we'll, bunch of people we'll, there. We'll leave that for yeah. Big E can be at the Hankinson <laughs> Community Center. You and I will go uh, to Kansas City like we did to Chicago. I think there will be a uh, a large contingent back home on that. But yeah, if if it's if he's in the conversation of, then that's a first round pick. You're getting invited, by the way. If that's the case, then holy cow, look out! What look does he wear? There. Does he go to Halberstadt's? <laughs> Does he wear a cutoff tux? Calber Stouts would love to outfit yeah. this guy. Does he wear like a cutoff tux there? Like he has the, the, the jersey, which you're seeing the gut all week? I mean, that was, uh, who was that? That was um, uh, when we were at the draft in Chicago. Oh, Ezekiel Elliott did, Ezekiel did, wore did the, that. Wore That's the cutoff. right. That's right. I forgot that. I, I, he made that popular. But And Carson wore the suit from J.C. Penny. Yeah. <laughs> that was the last J.C. Penny uh, yeah. suit he ever. Uh, Nothing against J.C. Penny. No, but it was just that was a different deal that uh, he was rocking then. But that's been fun to watch. The Senior Bowl comes up tomorrow on NFL Network at 1.30. And after that, then it's on to the Combine. And then uh, Pro Day after that, which uh, will happen the last week of March, which is a perfect segue to spring football, which we – we have talked about in the past of how the last couple of years outside of the spring season, spring balls kind of not been a snoozer, but yeah, you can, there were a couple stories going on, but you knew most of it. That ain't the case here for the spring of 2023. Especially Jeffrey. defensively. It's yeah. going to be very interesting to see what names come to the forefront. And um, starting in, in the, honestly, in the coaching position, we haven't talked about it on our pod. You broke the story on Jason Petrino being the new defensive coordinator coming from Southern Illinois to NDSU, he revamped their defense. He made SIU a really good defensive team. He got great players, but he he was the guy who was stemming the charge there. I, I thought they played hard. Is is when you think about those teams, and and that's a, a big deal as far as um, you know, when, when you're coaching a defense, are you do you play hard? Are you aggressive? And I I love those teams that do that. The Bison teams over the years obviously have done yeah. that. Not sure if they were, you know, as point on on point this year, but um, they, they need to uh, get a little better up front. I look at this, and we asked him this. He's got his work cut out for him here. He's got to rebuild an entire secondary. He's got to add uh, starting linebacker, and you mentioned losing a guy like Spencer Wagey up front. That is a tall task in its own right, Jeff, to replace that many guys. That, that spring ball is going to be infinitely curious to me on what they do there. What do you think? I mean, Well, I think the guys they added in the portal – that we that officially got announced on Wednesday are going to be right in the mix. Yeah. Hunter Zenzen, welcome to the Bison, and you got a great chance to play at defensive end. Marcus Shepard, kid from Bowling Green, you got a chance to play right away. Marcus Gully, maybe, the linebacker from MSUM. Hmm. Can he get into the road? I don't know. Maybe. It's hard at linebacker. You don't, but you know what? You, you don't take these guys in the portal unless they can help you. And give you some depth right away. I, I don't think they want to rotate at middle linebacker next no, year. No, they can't. I don't. I don't believe. I'll just tell you that my own personal opinion. That that was out of necessity this year. They need a dude. They got to find spot. the dude. Yep. I don't know if that guy's there. I I don't. I, I is Cole Wisniewski. Is he too good to move him from the outside to the inside with how? And I mean, he obviously wasn't a hundred percent either this year. I think as the season went along, but. You know that. That mm-hmm. injury is a year injury. He got that in, what, February? Well, and did Travis Beck's NFL dreams. Correct. Correct. He never was the same after So, that. I mean, Cole got hurt last February. So we're a year, almost a year into it. Let's see spring ball into the fall camp on, on where he's at. Secondary, I mean, you're going to have some young guys that are going to go, and that's, I imagine, story 1A for you and me during – Spring ball is looking at the defensive backs and who's emerging there. Yep, and they still have to hire another assistant right. coach, wide, wide receiver coach. coach. Um, rumor out there is the Crutchley guy from UND. Steve Crutchley is his name. Um, that's we'll, see. Been, we'll see if that's true. And he's only been there for one season. Um, he's running backs, but he was wide receivers coach at a previous stop. Yeah, it was Temple. He was a wide receiver coach there. Um, coached at St. Cloud State, so uh, Eau Claire. So he's been around... Uh, the Midwest, so he certainly has some ties there. So if that ends up coming to pass, that would be 
<laughs> I want interesting how the fans would react to hiring a coach from UND, but you know, that's it's about the best fit, right? Well, no, no, Polly was at Minnesota Duluth, so yep. there's a certain recruiting niche in that area. Footprint kind with of deal. Nick Gazer. Yeah. They, yep. You, you need to get those Wisconsin kids, those cities kids. That'd be something to keep an eye on uh, there for that last uh, hiring position there. Also, as we were tied up with signing day with the late period, which is so different now because I yeah, just that, so that, anticlimactic. It really is after when they moved the early signing period to December. Most walk ons, we believe. There's quite, yes. Uh, they got one, and there's another corner they got, uh, Tremaine Turner, who's actually a relative of Trey Dempsey. That's not true. It was not He's true. not true. I thought he they, was. They know each other well. Oh, because yeah. Ed's told me they were related. Yeah, well, Trey told me they're not. <laughs> well, I trust that source yeah. <laughs> on that. Um, but they come from the same high school, come right. from the same area, the same high school that Hunter Brosio's at, too. That might be, I don't know. You you always talk he to He might about, play right away. That's what I'm saying. The further yeah. away from the ball, you got a chance to get out there and play. That might be another guy and Matt, out there. And Matt said he's pretty well put together. So if you're physically ready to go, that's a big deal. A.J. Hines is another one to keep an eye on, young man from uh, New Salem, North Dakota, part of the state champions, the nine man. I, now he's six one two ninety, right? Yeah, and it's they're hoping it's another I like nine that man, size. another nine man gem that they found out is there. He a, I like that size for defense. Yeah, well, yeah, he's going to play offense though. He's an offensive hmm. lineman that they're at six one. They're that's what they're. That, he'd be the shortest offensive lineman they've had in quite some time. Offense, now. they're looking at ta- as a regular guard player right now is what they're thinking. I don't know if he's done growing, but that's something to keep an eye on there. Well, so. if you're two ninety, you're probably done growing. <laughs> I don't, go this? Can you go this way? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. You're done going this. Don't way. Don't ask me. I stopped growing <laughs> in seventh grade. <laughs> but uh, those are a couple of the the highlight guys to look at. But as, as Jeff mentioned, mostly um, most preferred walk-ons that came on there. And there's a couple of guys they got. I don't know if they're done either. And that's the thing to keep an eye on. When spring ball is done, the portal opens back up. So I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility when May 1 comes, if Matt Entz isn't done, and I'm going to use this terrible reference, if he's looking at a shopping list saying, we still need a couple of guys that maybe it didn't pan out during spring ball oh, to go back into the portal. And there's guys out there. Absolutely. We know that. I mean, that's a crazy amount of, of guys out there. One do we, thing, before we, yeah, before we wrap up, do we know if everybody with NDSU that went in the portal has found another spot? Uh, they have not. No, we we think DJ Hart's done. Rumor has. I, I don't it think there he's. I don't think he he's on the not, Northern yeah, Iowa roster. I don't believe that that's the case anymore. No, which that's too bad. If that ends up uh, coming to pass, that that's we, Kobe yeah. has not declared anywhere. Not on Kobe Johnson. Not on Jalen Bussey. Um, I think that Dom Jones, we've heard a couple of high profile spots, but nothing um on that yet either. So or according to Eubanks for that matter. Yeah, so yeah. Um signing day has come and gone. Doesn't mean they can't still sign, but that window is now I wouldn't say shut, but it's passed us by. So just something to keep an eye on as we go yeah, forward these on. Players that. better be careful to better be careful to, you know, what you ask for. I did see, by the way, in Big E's story, and uh, shout out to Big E on this, on oh, the, the NCA on the Division II yeah. deal, which is, by the way, it's a couple years late, but I'm glad they actually do it now, that on um, Division II football will allow them to play three games and keep their year of eligibility. I think that's a great deal. That's a really smart move there. Yeah, and it's only fair. I mean, it's yes. only fair. I, I wish it didn't take as long as it did. but that's Especially a, in Division II, because yep. you have fewer players, fewer scholarship guys. You get late in the year, you have injuries, and you want to burn a red shirt on on some freshman for the last two games. I think it totally makes sense. By the way, just to, I know we're going to follow this as we go into this season. Uh, Coach Prime is thirty five newcomers on the 35? spring roster. Thirty five, and a lot of them have a lot of stars next to their name. All, all <laughs> recruited legally, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be, it really will be fascinating. Man, to he's, see a, how he's it plays a salesman out. and a half. Oh, there's no oh, doubt. Oh, my goodness. Here's the thing, and it was brought up to me yesterday. How can how well can he coach? Jackson State was good, but in the two bowl appearances, they got boat raced by teams. And he brought 10 of those guys to Colorado. Right. Right. So that's 10 of the 35 are from Jackson State, which NDSU would kill. Yeah. And they. Uh, Jack or we'll see. Colorado plays the likes of Nebraska next year with Matt Rule now as head coach. So that ought to be awfully intriguing to see how that plays out. It's either going to work or it's not, Tom. <laughs> <dumb. laughs> 
I'm just telling you, when the Bison get to Boulder in August of 2020, will we have an idea by then if it's working or not after one season or not? Is that too oh, early? Oh, pretty good idea for sure. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens there. All right, we got to wrap it up. Reminder, Bison women are at home tomorrow against South Dakota State. You can catch the game on WDAY Extra at 1 o'clock. And the Bison men back home next weekend when they take on Denver and Omaha. Great stuff as always, man. Have a good weekend. Jeff Kolpak, Dom Izzo, Kolpak and Izzo podcast, available at informed.com. Thanks so much for listening, everybody.